Then um, I will just ask the first question. Emma, how are you, how are you feeling to be back at Wimbledon? I'm very much looking forward to being back here at Wimbledon. I think that it's the most special place to be playing tennis and just a very inspiring and motivating place to be. And uh, definitely looking forward to stepping out on court on, on Monday and um, yeah, ready, ready to go. Hi Emma, Eleanor Crook from PA. I mean, obviously you suffered the injury in, in Nottingham. How is it? And can you say why you didn't play in the court one practice you were scheduled to yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been managing it since Nottingham and I took two weeks off. Um, but yeah, I've been preparing this week and yesterday we just have to react to the situation. I already practised in the morning, so... Yeah, I th we all collectively thought it was the best decision to to pass on the afternoon session as well, and um, yeah, stay fresh and and ready to go. Hello, I'm Mike Dixon, the Mail. Uh, have, you, have you been at any point this week thinking that you wouldn't play, or has there been a particular point where you decided, yes, I'm definitely going to play? I think that this week was uh, a good build up, and we definitely. You know, had there were moments earlier on in the week we weren't really sure we were sort of going to see how the week goes, but it went pretty well. And uh, yeah, now now it's full steam ahead. Everyone's really looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, we're all ready. And, and uh, Rob Moore for Summer Sport, doesn't it? Do you feel any pain when you're serving? Obviously, the side is an issue as a, as a tennis player. You're putting it under a lot of strain. Are you pretty pain free? Would you say? Right now, I'm fit, I'm ready to go, I'm looking forward to it, and that's it. Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. Emma, you spoke in your introductory remarks about how special Wimbledon is. When you walk onto the grounds, what are the little details that strike you most about the place? Mm, the details is just the attention to detail in every single aspect that this place has. I, I mean, from the flowers to everything, they they have like subtle hints of tennis rackets and tennis balls in the carpets. And it's just, you know, that the, the level that they go to to make sure that this place is pretty much perfect is pretty outstanding. And that attention to detail is is pretty inspiring in itself, you know, if you can take that and, and how Wimbledon thinks about their grounds and um, and apply it to, to yourself and have those sort of standards of yourself. And I think that's inspiration in itself. Hi, Emma. Molly McElroy from The Telegraph. Um, I wonder, I, being at, on the practice courts and seeing all of these amazing players around you, I think I saw you watching a bit of Nadal this morning. Gerald Piquet was also there, which was quite fun. But I just wonder what it's like to... Do, is it still surreal to you to be in and amongst all of these kind of amazing players that I can imagine you must have looked up to? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, I'm 19. Like, just to be watching Rafa and Novak at such close range and and to be able to, to sort of take part and try learn from them and... Uh, you know, walk amongst these great players, it's it's still special. Like, I don't think it really ever changes when you're watching those greats. And it's amazing to have them around, you know, leading such a great example. I I think that, yeah, I'm still, it's only my second Wimbledon. Like, I'm I'm really new to this still. So it's it's a really special feeling. Carradine? In BBC Scotland, I've just seen the order of play for Monday. It's Novak, then you, then Andy. So, how do you feel about that? And there was maybe a suggestion that you might try and play mixed with Andy, but maybe with your respective <laughs> build-ups being not as great as you both wanted. Is that is that off the table now? Yeah, I don't think we're playing, but um, I think that's a that's a pretty cool lineup. Just to be included amongst those names is is special in itself. I never would have thought that, but. Yeah, I'm obviously looking forward to getting out there. Hi, Emma. Obviously, it's 12 months since the big breakthrough here last year. What's different so far about your experience this year, kind of behind the scenes? I guess you're in a different locker room and lots of other details like that would be different. And are there any aspects of last year's experience that you, that you miss, maybe? I think it's amazing. This year, you know, I get such a special feeling walking around the grounds 
Uh, I definitely feel that people are behind me, you know, even from some of the people, you know, working on the tournament, they're like, you got this and just cheering me on. So that's pretty special in itself. And uh, and and one of the perks is is that I don't need to cross the road at Orangi to, to practice now on like court 28 or something. But um, yeah, that's definitely a perk. But uh, I feel like last year I came straight out of my exams. I was just fresh, ready to play. And I feel like I feel the same excitement this year, to be honest, because I think that Wimbledon just brings that out of me, especially. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to it and just going to play like, you know, a kid who just loves playing tennis. You know, it's always my dream to step out onto centre court. And, and that's something that I've always wanted to do and started playing tennis for. Hi, I'm Alex McPherson from the WCA. Um, can I have your thoughts on your first round opponent, Alison Van Oakbank, especially regarding the change in dynamics since you last played her? Um, last year you were the unseated player and she was top seed and you upset her. And now this time you're the seed and she's the unseated player. Yeah, I think that, you know, I played her in August last year, so that's nine months ago. I think she was definitely, you know, the top seed at the time and I kind of just got into the tournament. But I I definitely feel like game-wise, I back myself pretty much against anyone. I feel like if I really put my mind to it and commit, then then I can be pretty good. Um, so, <laughs> so I... I'm definitely looking forward to the match, but she she's just a really tricky opponent, like especially on grass courts. I think that this surface definitely suits her well, um, and she plays a pretty you know quick high tempo game. So it's definitely going to take some getting used to and uh, you know being prepared for that uh, straight away. So um, it's definitely going to be a tough matchup, but you know every every match is at this level. So I'm I'm still ready to go. Hello Emma, uh, Tom Hopkinson from the Sunday Mirror. Um, you just spoke about seeing some of the big names of uh, tennis on the practice course and uh, you know what it still means to you, but have you noticed since the US that perhaps they treat you a little bit differently when you're around them and, and you know, you're sort of accepted as one of them now? Um, yeah, I would say that you know there, there have been like some changes just walking around for sure, um, but actually last year Novak said was like saying hi to me and I thought that was a really you know cool thing like number one in the world he said hi to me like wow and and that was like before any of the the result really so I thought that was pretty cool of him to do and um yeah this year definitely just getting good practices um playing with some of the top in the world so you get to test yourself like at each practice and um yeah it's it's a it's a really cool thing to keep improving Hi Emma, it's uh, Anthony France from the Evening Standard. Um, there's some figures coming out which show that the, um, the surge um, interested Londoners um, uh, as a result of you winning uh, the US Open. Um, how do you feel about inspiring a new generation of youngsters to uh, pick up their rackets? Yeah, it, it is a really nice feeling, you know, to, just to think that some youngsters might pick up tennis because, you know, they've watched me or, you know, what what I did and and I you know that's always something that I wanted to do is to inspire you know the younger generation and to see those players come through I feel like especially maybe some of the younger girls who might feel like they're they're really shy or or they don't want to play with the boys like I can totally relate to that because I've been there I I went through that myself I was really shy I was clinging on to the fence I didn't want to go on the court um but yeah it just opens up so many opportunities and I definitely grew a lot as a person just playing tennis, um, more confidence and yeah, sport definitely just opens up a lot of opportunities for young people. I saw a couple times at Arangi you were playing uh, spike ball and mm -hmm. I'm curious how much of that you've done and how you, how you got introduced to it. Well, the first time I played was actually Fed Cup this year. I didn't know what spike ball was before that and it's just a great way to sort of get warm and raise your pulse and also the reactive element of it so um, and it's competitive and and I think that it's just really fun and and maybe sometimes warm-ups can be a bit mundane so it definitely you know livens them up a little bit. Um, Emma I was talking to Tim Henman he was saying he kind of chatted to you a little bit about the, the Wimbledon experience like as a leading British player so how 
how much have you prepared for the attention that's going to be on you and how are you going to handle that? And also, have you ever hit or played on centre court before? No, I've never hit on centre court. Um, to be honest, like I take whatever, you know, feeling as, as positive. I think that people were going to be behind me and cheering me on and there's nothing sort of negative about that you know they want you to do well so I yeah I'm looking forward to going out there and experiencing that and feeling that okay. Okay, one more question. Yes, um, hi I'm uh, Antonio of uh, La Repubblica um, just wanted to ask you after uh, winning the US Open you feel now more more confident I mean, uh, uh, about your style of play uh, or, or you feel also a bit of more of uh, pressure as well? Thank you. Um, I think that I, as a tennis player, have actually grown and developed and, and have skills that I maybe didn't have last year. But, you know, everyone knows me now and everyone knows the sort of things I was doing last year and everyone wants to beat me and you know I sort of take that as a compliment if players are raising their game against me because you know they they want to do well against you so um, I think that that is definitely going to help me as a tennis player long term because if players are raising their game against me I have to raise my level too um, so I think that it's there's nothing negative about that and you know over time I will be a better tennis player and you know, I'm 19 years old. If I hadn't won the US Open, I think that, you know, the past year or, or the way that I've been sort of heading, it, it wouldn't be like a necessarily a bad thing um, or result wise. You know, I think that I still have hopefully, you know, 15 years or something more in my career to go and, and I'm just at the beginning of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward for this long term journey. Nick McCarver with Wimbledon Uncovered. You're just speaking about this last year and, and all the experiences you've been been through. What do you feel like you've learned the most about yourself in that year? I'd say I've learned that I'm resilient and I always knew that, that I had that, but just um, to, to keep getting back up, uh, I said like, you know, fall down 10 times, get up 11 because you know, what are you going to do about it? You, all you can do is keep moving forward. There's no there's no point looking back and getting down because you just keep getting back up. Like, I'm not sort of playing for anyone just to go out there and play for myself. And, uh, yeah, the test that I've kind of gone through, I think is, is going to help me as a person and a player long term. And, um, yeah, to experience it so young, I feel like I'm lucky that I get this lesson at such an early age. So, you know, I have a lot of time to, to get better at it and everything.